We are going to be making pumpkin chiffon cake. It is airy and fluffy, yet moist and soft. It is delicious on its own, but even better when you serve with slightly sweetened whipped cream. Let's get started. The first thing you will need to do is cook your pumpkin. Cut your pumpkin into big chunks, put that in a heat proof bowl. Cover it with a plastic wrap and microwave it 2 minutes on 800 watt. Or cook until the skewer goes through easily. Peel and pass through the sieve. There you have silky pumpkin puree. Set aside. Separate egg yolk from the white as soon as take it out from the fridge. You can easily separate the yolk from the white when it's still cold. Put your egg yolks into a big bowl, add 20 grams sugar and whisk to combine well. Add oil and milk. The oil gives a moist and tender texture to the cake, and it won't get firm when it's chilled. Add pumpkin puree and mix well. Sift all-purpose flour into the bowl. Whisk until sticky. All-purpose flour contains more gluten than cake flour, less than bread flour. What I need here is some gluten to hold meringue. Let's make meringue. You guys already know how to make meringue, but for those who, for the first time to see how to make meringue, let me walk you through step by step. First, set your hand mixer on low, cut the stiffness. When it becomes foamy, add one third of the sugar. Keep whisking on low, add next one third of sugar when the first sugar had dissolved. Repeat the process one more time. When all the sugar dissolved, set the speed on high, whisk until just before stiff peaks form. Here is a perfect glossy and dense meringue. Let's combine with the butter. Scoop meringue into the butter. Use whisk to mix. This is my method to mix without deflating the meringue. Use whisk to cut the meringue into butter quickly. Most of the people use spatula to mix meringue, but it takes more time, which means more chance to deflate. Trust me, you can make perfect chiffon cake butter. Mix the rest of the meringue like so. Switch to spatula to mix the bottom to even the butter. Transfer the butter to ungreased mold. The reason why we are not going to grease the mold is, as the butter bakes, it will rise higher and higher. The butter should stick to the mold without falling off. Take your chopsticks or skewer, swirl and to make sure no big air bubbles remain. Even the surface with spatula. Bake at 180 Celsius for 15 minutes. Drop the temperature to 160 Celsius for 15 minutes or until done. Turn it upside down and cool completely. If you have time, wrap it up in a plastic and let it sit overnight in the fridge. Next day, the cake becomes nice and soft. Let's take it out from the mold. I don't use spatula. Everybody's surprised how I take it out from the mold. You don't need spatula to take it out. Your finger around the mold to tear off from the mold. You don't want to push too hard. Tear off chiffon cake gently from the side of the mold little by little. In this way, you won't lose your beautiful crust around the mold. I don't like to use spatula to take it out because I can't keep my beautiful brown crust around the cake. Trust me, you will have a beautiful cake. There you have the most beautiful chiffon cake. I like to serve with slightly sweetened whipped cream. Sprinkle chopped pistachio and cinnamon. So fluffy but moist, perfectly spongy chiffon cake is done. I don't add baking powder to this cake, so the cake will rise by meringue. You can have the most fluffiest cake without baking powder in my method. What I like the most about this cake is, 
you can enjoy it even if you are full at the end of the rich dinner. It's perfect for Thanksgiving dinner dessert. Give it a try and let me know how you like it. Today I'm gonna be making mitarashi dango with pumpkin. Mitarashi dango is one of the typical Japanese wagashi for a daily snack. If you have mochiko in your pantry, add some water to make a dough and it's ready in no time. But today I used pumpkin to make it extra healthy. Let's get started. Take out seeds from your pumpkin. Cut off the skin and cut into bite size. Put it in a heat proof bowl and cook in the microwave on 800 watt for 1 minute and 30 to 40 seconds or until soft. Mash the pumpkin while it's still hot. Add a pinch of salt and mochiko. Mix until the dough forms. Adjust the consistency with water. The consistency is like play dough. Not too soft but not too firm. Take out onto your working surface and divide the dough into two. Roll out the dough into ropes 2 cm in diameter. Cut into 2 cm lengths. In this way, you can divide the dough into the same size. Roll the dough into small balls on your palm. Put the dango into boiling water and cook on medium heat for 5 to 6 minutes. The dango will sink to the bottom at first, then it float to the surface. After floating to the surface, cook 3 to 4 minutes more. Meanwhile, let's prepare the mitarashi sauce. Put all the ingredients except diluted potato starch in water. Bring it to a boil and lower the heat. Stir in diluted potato starch in water and cook until thickened. The sauce can be more sweet or savory. You can adjust the taste. Take out the cooked dango with a slotted spoon. Soak in water for a few minutes to cool it down. Drain and skew if you like. Cover with the sauce and it's ready to enjoy. You can serve the dango in a small bowl like this. The natural sweetness from the pumpkin and the chewy texture goes so well with mitarashi sauce. You can pan fry the dango to add the crisp before covering the sauce. Today I want to share with you how to make pumpkin pudding. This pumpkin pudding is served in a small pumpkin with fresh steel in. You can have sweet pudding and nutritious pumpkin fresh at the same time. I use Japanese kabocha squash but you can use orange pumpkin. How about cute little pumpkin for your Halloween? Let's get started. Cut top off pumpkins. Scoop out and discard the seeds and fiber around the seeds. Correct the fresh from the upper part and put them in the ramekin. Line them on a steamer and steam for 15 minutes or until soft. Preheat the oven to 160 degrees Celsius. Carefully take off the skin from the pumpkin. Add in the fresh from the ramekin and mash to get a smooth puree. It's okay if you get more or less. Add in sugar while still hot and whisk until the sugar dissolves. Crack your egg one by one and beat until well mixed. Add in salt, vanilla and rum. Pour in the heavy cream and mix well. Set the sieve on the jug and pass through the mixture. Pour the mixture into a pumpkin. Pour the leftovers to a ramekin. Pop in the oven for 15 minutes. Rotate the tray halfway through. When the pudding is no longer jiggling, it's done. 
take out and leave until it comes to room temperature. You can serve warm or chill. These are chilled overnight to set. Let me cut the moment of truth. Ta da! Look at that golden, rich, and creamy pudding. Cut into wedges to serve if you wanted to. This recipe is not too sweet, so you can add more sugar or dissolved maple syrup or honey to your liking. The texture is velvety and smooth. Natural sweetness from the Japanese kabocha squash is so comfortable. Give it a try and let me know how you like it. Today I'm going to be making pumpkin bread. I've been making this recipe at this time of the year. I love making them because of the shape. How adorable it is. Kids love it. It might take a little bit longer time to shape it, but totally worth it. And it is so delicious. Fluffy and sweet, but not too sweet. Served with roasted pork or chicken, that would be so nice for the autumn table. I found some videos making into pumpkin shapes with the kitchen strings and I gave it a try as well. Let's see what happens in the end. Let's get started. You can use pumpkin or squash whatever you have on your hand. First, let's cook the pumpkin. I am using the Japanese kabocha squash. If you don't want to use the microwave, steam or boil in the pot. While cooking, let's prepare the wing mold. Grease inside with the butter. Wrap your finger with the plastic wrap and take a generous amount of butter and grease the inside. Crack your egg and beat until the yolks and egg white were well combined. We need 30 grams and save the rest for the egg wash. Take off the skin from the pumpkin and keep the rest for the later use. We need 100 grams of pumpkin puree. If you are using a canned pumpkin puree, add rest milk as I indicated. Today I also make sweet pumpkin bread. I mix the rest of the kabocha squash puree with the white bean paste. I make it into a cylinder and wrap in a plastic and set aside. Mix all the wet ingredients together. Add bread flour and salt and sugar in a bowl and mix well. Add instant dry yeast and mix. I always told you salt and sugar might deactivate the yeast, so do not add at the same time. Add wet ingredients into dry in two to three parts and mix to combine. Add more milk if needed. When you hold the dough and if the consistency is like play dough, it is okay to proceed. Take out onto the working surface and start kneading. Do you remember my kneading position of the feet and shoulders? Watch my cream pan video. After 3 to 4 minutes of kneading, the dough becomes elastic and smooth like this. And when you pinch the dough and it stretches like paper thin, the time to add the butter. When you add the butter, the dough will fall apart but it comes together in a couple of minutes. After adding the butter, the dough becomes more elastic and shiny like this. Shape it into a bowl and put it back in the bowl. Cover with plastic and let it rise until double in bulk at the warm place. It took 50 minutes at 30 degrees Celsius. Let me check the fermentation went right or not. Poke the dough with your dusted forefinger in the center. The dough stay as it is, it's okay to go. If the whole shrinks, leave 10 minutes longer. Divide the dough into 4 pieces of 60 gram and leave the rest. Shape into balls and cover with wrap to prevent from drying.
To make a small pumpkin, take 160 gram dough and shape into a log. Cut into six equal portions. Shape into a bowl and put them in a prepared ring. The dough is so small, it's not easy to stretch the surface, but have fun with that. Maybe your kids love to help. For larger pumpkin, I'm using 12 cm in diameter cake tin. We need 12 pieces of 15 grams dough. Keep the rest for the tasting. This is how I tried the pumpkin shaped bread with the kitchen strings. This is 30 grams of dough with 20 grams pumpkin and white bean paste inside. Take a 1 meter long string. Soak in oil to prevent from sticking. Get your string around the door and cross on top and go another way to go around and repeat two more times and tie it loosely on top. Line them on a baking tray and cover with the plastic wrap to prevent from drying. Leave it on a warm place about 30 minutes until double in bulk. Brush the egg on the surface. Put it in a 190 degree Celsius oven for 10 minutes or until golden brown on the surface. Rotate the pan halfway through. How adorable they are! But here's the problem. How can I take out the strings? Snip off the strings at the bottom and top and take out like pulling out. I have a feeling that this method will not go well, but not too bad. Take a look at the small pumpkins. It looks so good. The small pumpkin bread takes 10 minutes to bake, but the larger pumpkin takes 50 minutes to cook through so leave it another 5 to 6 minutes in the oven and reduce the heat to 160 degrees Celsius. For the small pumpkin, stick in a skin cut into strings in the center. To make it more attractive, apply butter while still hot. The butter makes it shine and make it even more flavorful. It looks so gorgeous. Let me taste it. Take out one from the small pumpkin and you can see how fluffy it is. Some of you asked me about how can I keep the fluffiness for the next couple of days. The homemade bread has no additives, of course, so the homemade bread just keep the fluffiness until the next day. If you want to keep more extended days, just freeze it. Or I recommend the overnight method. When you finish kneading the dough, keep in the fridge overnight 8 hours to 15 hours. Longer proofing time makes the long-lasting dough. You have to eat in two days in any ways. I keep the bread for the next day, but I always freeze it for the rest of the bread. Take it out from the freezer one to two hours before you eat and reheat in the warm oven. It is just like a freshly baked from the oven. My pumpkin bread is really good for upcoming holidays and of course Halloween party. Give it a try and let me know how you like it. Today I want to share with you my pumpkin shokupan. 
Do you like the taste of fall? For me, one of the taste of fall is pumpkin. It's the time to enjoy baking for your Halloween and holidays. It's amazingly soft and fluffy, and the natural sweetness is so comfortable. It's not so sweet as sweet buns, so you can serve with savory dishes. Let's get started. You can use pumpkin or squash, whatever you have on your hand, or you can use canned pumpkin puree. Let's cook my kabocha. I'm using the Japanese kabocha squash. Wrap it in a piece of plastic and cook in the microwave for 800 watt for 2 minutes or until fully cooked. If you don't want to use the microwave, steam or boil instead. While cooking, combine the dry ingredients. Today I used dried milk, which is commonly used in the Japanese bakery. Dry milk adds milky flavor without making the dough sticky. Scrape the fresh from the kabocha. You will need 180 grams of the fresh. Mash the kabocha into a paste. As you can see, Japanese kabocha contains less water and very starchy, and it's sweeter than any other pumpkins. If you are using canned pumpkin puree, skip this process. Add in half the amount of water from the ingredients to cool it down. Before adding the egg, crack in your egg and beat until well combined. Do not worry if there are small chunks remain. s Pour in the pumpkin puree into the Stand mixer bowl in slow and steady stream. Add in the rest of the water. Do not add all of the water at this stage. If you are using canned pumpkin puree or pumpkin has more moisture, use less water to keep the consistency. I add all the water into my dough. The dough is a little bit sticky than you think, but it's the ideal consistency to make a fluffy and moist bread. If you are not comfortable with the consistency, add less water to keep it easy to handle. When you pinch the dough and it stretches like paper thin, it's the time to add butter. When you add the butter, That dough will fall apart, but it comes together in a couple of minutes. After three minutes of mixing, the dough becomes more elastic and shiny like this. Shape into a bowl and put it back in the greased bowl. Cover with plastic and let it rise for the first rise. Until double in bulk at the warm place for 40 to 45 minutes. Punch the dough and let it rise for the second rise for about 30 minutes or until double in volume. Let's check the fermentation when white or not with the finger test. Poke the dough with your dusted finger in the center. The hole s t a y as it is, it's okay to go. If the hole shrinks or bounces back, leave 10 minutes more. If the dough starts to collapse, work quickly as you can. Divide the dough into six. It's about 140 grams each dough. Shape into balls and cover with plastic wrap to prevent from drying. Take 10 minutes bench rest. After 10 minutes, roll the dough out and shape into a bowl.
What this does is removing excess carbon dioxide and provide oxygen to evenly rise for the final stage. Put the dough balls into a well greased mold. Leave it at warm place about 40 to 45 minutes until the dough rises 1 cm from the edge. While the final fermentation, Preheat the oven for 100 degrees Celsius. Pop in the oven and immediately we set the oven for 200 degrees Celsius. Bake for 40 minutes. If your bread turn brown quickly, cover with a piece of aluminum foil. After 40 minutes, take out from the oven and tap the mold onto your working surface to remove the hot air inside. To make it more attractive, apply butter while still hot. The butter makes it shine and make it even more flavorful. How adorable my pumpkin shock pan! Leave it until cool to the room temperature before cutting. It's really soft, so I decide to leave it for the next day. Look at that bright yellow crumb. You can see how fluffy it is. You can make a great toast, which I love the most. And it makes a great chicken sandwich with your leftover chicken. But today, Halloween and holidays are approaching, let's make French toast. French toast is not an everyday thing, so I want my French toast indulgent. It should be thick and fluffy with caramelized crunchy outside. Soak a thick slice of pumpkin shock pan well. Some people want their French toast soak up the custard just outside, but I want mine soak up into the center and I like it pudding-like texture. Drop half a tablespoon of unsalted butter and put it in the frying pan. On medium-low heat and cover, cook for 3 minutes. Flip it over and cook another 3 minutes. When it touches the center and it bounces back, it's cooked. This is how I finish my French toast. Set your French toast aside and add in half a tablespoon of sugar in the space. Cook until sugar caramelized and slide your French toast on the caramel. Flip it over and cover both sides with the caramel. There you have it. This is my favorite French toast. Drizzle maple syrup as much as you want, dust with cinnamon and a little bit of nutmeg, and powdered sugar. Let's take a bite. Fluffy and moist inside, crunchy outside makes the French toast next level. It's homemade but restaurant quality. The smell of the warm spice makes you relax and it's good to have on a sunny weekend. Give it a try and let me know how you like it.
Hi friends, today I'm going to be making stuffed pumpkin in Japanese style. Have you ever tried Japanese kabocha squash? It's a good time of the year to try. It has a natural sweetness to it and the texture is similar to potato and packed with nutrients. The steamed kabocha is a staple dish, but today I make it into stuffed pumpkin with the ankake sauce. The ankake sauce is a soy sauce based thick sauce and it's so delicious. The sweetness of the kabocha and the savory aroma from the sauce is complement each other. And you can make ahead and freeze it for the busy weeknight dinner or a party. Let's get started. First, scoop out the pulp and seeds from the kabocha. Cut into four. It's really firm, so be sure to hold the knife tightly, not to slip and hurt yourself. Shave the skin where you see the scratches on the surface and the dirty part and keep the smooth skin on it. And then cut into chunks and place on the heat proof tray and cover with plastic wrap. Microwave it for 5 to 6 minutes or until soften on 800 watt. Meanwhile, let's prepare the other ingredients. Miso onion and shiitake mushroom. You can use the stem when you mince it finely. Now let's cook the filling. Put your ground chicken into a pot, not heated yet. Add grated ginger and sake. Stir with chopsticks until sake absorbs. Now turn the heat on and start cooking on the medium heat. Use four chopsticks to separate the grains and keep cooking until it's cooked through. Add minced onion and shiitake mushroom. Cook another couple of minutes until the onion looks translucent. Add mirin and soy sauce and cook until almost all of the liquid is evaporated. It's going to take 5 to 6 minutes. It depends on the onion's moisture, but take your time to evaporate the moisture to make the next step easier. Set aside until used. Now let's shape kabocha into the individual stuffed pumpkin. Take out a piece of plastic wrap on the countertop and place the cooked kabocha on it. We are going to make 5 small stuffed pumpkins, so you should divide them into 5 portions. Wrap it loosely and smash the kabocha with your palm and spread it out to 12 to 15 cm in diameter. Open the plastic wrap, place a spoonful of fillings in the center, and wrap it around and shape it into a round shape. It's really like you are making a round shape of onigiri. The kabocha squash is cooked in the microwave so it doesn't add any moisture, so the consistency is just good. If your pumpkin is watery, Cook in the microwave without the plastic wrap and you can evaporate the excess moisture. And there you have your 5 small stuffed pumpkin. You can freeze it at this step and it will last a couple of months in the freezer and you can keep it in the fridge for about a couple of days. Now let's make the ankake sauce. Pour 
in a cup of dashi into a small pot and bring it to a boil. Add mirin and soy sauce, preferably light soy sauce. When it comes to a boil, add potato starch solution little by little to thicken the sauce. Give it a nice stir each time you add the potato starch solution. If you do not stir, you will have lumps in the sauce and it is not what we want here. You want to make sure to add the potato starch solution to get the desired consistency. You can use cornstarch instead, but it looks a bit cloudy and needs more than the potato starch. The consistency is like this. When you ladle it and it has a little bit of thickness, a little bit thicker than the gravy sauce. For the garnishing, cut your scallion diagonally. Place your stuffed pumpkin in a bowl and pour over the ankake sauce. And topped with scallions. Just 3 to 4 pieces is enough to add intense flavor to the dish. There you have it. Kabocha is so delicious with the ground chicken filling and the aromatic ankake sauce. The texture of the kabocha is flaky, just like potato, and the balance of the ankake sauce and the filling is so nice. I love this dish so much, and isn't it look like a kaiseki style high-end restaurant dish? You can entertain the people at your home with this easy but delicious and hearty autumn dish. Give it a try and let me know how you like it. Hi friends, today I'm going to be making pumpkin scones. I don't usually choose scones at the coffee shop because sometimes it's too dry in the mouthfeel, but this is an exception. It was so delicious and I love everything with pumpkins. I want to make my own in my kitchen and I think I did a great job. It's perfect for sweet breakfast and 4 o'clock snacks with the freshly brewed coffee. Let's get started. Scoop out the seeds and pulp. Wrap in a piece of plastic and microwave it for 5 to 6 minutes at 800 Watt. Meanwhile, chop the toasted walnut. Scrape out the fresh from the cooked pumpkin. Mash it with a fork into a chunky paste. Preheat the oven to 180 degrees Celsius. Now, let's mix the wet ingredients. Put your pureed pumpkin into the medium-sized bowl. Add your groat and one large egg. Whisk well until evenly mixed. Sift together all-purpose flour and baking powder and cinnamon powder and just a little bit of nutmeg into a shallow container. Even now the spices into the all-purpose flour. Put in unsalted butter into the container. Slice your butter in the flour. The butter should be cold enough to cut through. Then cut into matchsticks. Do not touch too much to your butter with your fingers. Your butter will melt with your body temperature and your scone ends up hard like rocks. You can use a carved pie blender and a bowl, but this is much easier to work with for me. Dust all the strips with the flour. Rotate the container and chop the butter into small dice. You can use food processor for this process. But it doesn't take too long to do this process, 
and I don't want to clean up my food processor. Continue chopping the butter in the flour until the butter becomes smaller than the piece or looks like panko breadcrumbs. Pour half of the pumpkin mixture and toss to combine. Be careful with not melting the butter and try not to knead the dough. Do not develop the gluten to make the light and flaky pumpkin scones. Add the pumpkin mixture to the dry spot and toss to combine. Just to moisten all the dry parts with the pumpkin and egg mixture. Scrape off the dough every once in a while to make it evenly moist. It looks like the pumpkin mixture is enough, so leave it out. You want to make sure the scone dough should not be too wet but not too dry. It's just good to put all the ingredients together. Dust your cutting board or working surface with a generous amount of all-purpose flour. Transfer your pumpkin scone dough onto the cutting board and put it together with a scraper. It looks just like a mess, but no worries, it's going to be a good scone dough. Put it flat to hold it together and cut into three. Put it onto itself and pat it out to keep it together. Repeat the process two more times. It looks like it doesn't keep it together, but this is what you want. The butter and the flour make the layers, and when you bake it, the butter melts in the dough, and it makes the pocket inside the dough, and your scone will be light and flaky, and the outside is so crispy. If your pumpkin has too much moisture, adjust the consistency with the amount of the wet ingredients to add the dry ingredients. Be sure to leave it out if your dough is moist enough. Cut into two and put it onto the other. Put it out into a 20 by 12 cm rectangle. Cut into 6 squares and cut each square into 2 and make 12 triangles. Look at that sharp edges. This means the dough is perfect in the moisture. Remove excess flour with your dry brush and brush a little bit of milk on the surface. What this does is make a thin crust on top and it makes easy to apply the icing. While baking, let's make the icing. Mix powdered sugar and milk in a small bowl and adjust the consistency like this. When you drop it and flow slowly, that's the best consistency. If your icing is too thin, it doesn't stay on your pumpkin scones. But if you don't like your scone too sweet, it's better to make it thinner than mine. Take your pumpkin scones out from the oven and put it on the wire rack and leave it for 5 minutes. After 5 minutes, brush the icing while still warm. It will be dry out quickly. Set your wire rack on the baking tray to catch the excess icing. After applying all the pumpkin scones, add cinnamon powder to the rest of the icing. If your icing is too thick, add a little bit of milk to adjust the consistency. Here comes the fun part. Put your cinnamon icing into the corner, the small piping bag, and draw the lines on the pumpkin scone. How cute are they? Let it dry and transfer to a serving dish. You can see how soft the pumpkin scone is, and it's very airy and so light and so moist. The scone itself is not so sweet, so that you can adjust the sweetness with your icing on top. Or you can just keep the icing. Enjoy your beautiful autumn day with the pumpkin scones and freshly brewed coffee. It's good for your Halloween dessert. 
give it a try and let me know how you like it. Thank you for watching the video. Give me a big thumbs up and share the video with your friends and families. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. Follow me on the social media and tag me on your post if you give it a try. And go to my website for the printable recipe and more information. And my store on Amazon has pretty much everything that I'm using in my video. Stay safe and stay healthy, and I will see you soon. Bye!